look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 in hindsight We make mistakes, we're learning from the in hindsight be yours today and your tomorrow In hindsight is so much clearer now Have you ever wondered how learning a new language could transform your mental health? Boost your self-confidence and open up a world of opportunities. Well, today we're diving into the fascinating world of la language acquisition with Angela Blanco, the founder of Fluency Lab. With over eight years of experience in helping adults master Spanish and a passion for integrating the latest brain research into her teaching methods, Angela has a wealth of knowledge to share. Join us as we explore the myths of language learning the incredible benefits of being bilingual and how you can tailor language learning to fit your unique intelligence. Welcome Angela to hindsight, the podcast. How are you doing this? Well, we, we talked a little bit before we got started. So how are you doing today? I won't say how are you doing this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to go for the whole day concept thing now in this case. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you for having me on. I'm very excited about talking about all those topics. Awesome. So where are you calling in from? I'm living in North Wales right now in the UK. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. How How is North Wales? I've never been there. Well, um, there is all the, always this uh, cliche thought that it's going to be cloudy and rainy as <laughs> exactly. the UK normally is. Uh, but it depends. Now that the summer is starting, it's quite uh, sunny and happy and full of flowers everywhere. So, yeah, we say that it's springy and summery now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a little... So for California, right, actually, it's it's the sun is kind of coming out right now. But usually in the morning, there's this marine layer and it just comes off the ocean over the mountains and it just creeps in the sky. And then about... 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it dissipates, and then the sun is shining through, and it's a beautiful day. But right. I enjoy the coolness in the morning, so uh, just because I get out and walk my dog, and I don't need it to be 100 degrees in the morning. So. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Well, we will never reach that temperature here. Uh, so oh, I, oh, lucky. But yeah, but California, but California I, imagine, I imagine how it would be during the Absolutely. whole year, right? Very sunny. <laughs> All right, so... Um, you know, hindsight, we like to talk about your life's journey. And we also like to talk about what you're doing in your life's journey, right? So before we get started, uh, just tell us just a little bit about yourself, your upbringing, some of your, you know, stories and, and a little bit about how you got to where you are today, which is a language acquisitioner. What do, what do we call you? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I don't know, like a fan of languages and learning. Uh, oh. languages that the process of the acquisition of languages <laughs> wow. those... how many la how many languages before you get started how many languages do you know well that's that's a tough question always because it depends on to which level you know how, how yeah, confident yeah. you feel expressing yourself in them so i would say that the ones that i feel confident and fluent is english and spanish uh but i've been also learning some portuguese um german and now and because mm. i'm living in wells i'm getting used to the welsh but that's the one that is the most complicated one for me okay i just get in there <laughs> <laughs> all right i am in, 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 in full disclosure i am super interested and excited to talk to you and i'll and i'll put my business out there i've been trying to learn spanish for years you know as we're talking i need you to share some of those tips on how to uh, make it easier for me to navigate trying to learn a new language. But go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself first. Well, that's great. I, I'm, I'm now, now I'm curious about <laughs> knowing what is your, your process. Well, uh, I'm from Colombia. I was born in the capital city in Bogota. I lived there most of my life. Mm -hmm. I studied the education and well, I, I said that, I always said that and I still say it, that my, my parents know it. I've always been a, a tutor, a professor, an educator. I always had that in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, comes from my family as well, both psychologists. So we're, we're kind of uh, <laughs> crazy about that stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I, got, I got this uh, great opportunity, some of the things I will be mentioning to you today, um, to start learning, uh, sorry, teaching my language. So, mm -hmm. yeah, everything just to talk, took the right path, and here I am. <laughs> Why did you leave Colombia? Well, I won't. Uh, the, there's two moments when I lived 
I left mm-hmm. the country. One of them was uh, I traveled to Jamaica for teaching Spanish and learning English. And mm-hmm. then now when I came here is because uh, of my husband. I met my husband in Colombia, but he's from here. So here we are. <laughs> That's why I'm here now. <laughs> uh, simple answer. <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. so you're in the UK for love, I understand. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's the explanation why I cope with the rain and the and the gloom. <laughs> so, talk to us a little bit about Fluency Lab and what is the overall um, expectation? Someone who invests their time with Fluency Lab, what they should get out of it? Okay, well, Fluency Lab is a uh, online. Spanish school, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the main um, explanation of it. We realized that um, even before the pandemic, it was was getting more and more uh, popular, the Mm -hmm. idea of learning online. Thankfully, uh, the pandemic just made that grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, we we know the the value that it has for uh, being able to talk with a native speaker. and learn the language uh, also with someone who knows about the ins and outs of it. And and the best way to be able to access someone from a different culture, from a different country was uh, online. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and we also uh, know and uh, recognize the importance that now in countries such as the USA or Canada or some places in Europe, Spanish is uh, is getting like now you can use it for healthcare, in law, and many different uh, industries. So we specialize in working with people, professionals who maybe don't have too much time and maybe they feel like mm. okay i just need to be born again <laughs> or <laughs> yeah because uh, kids learn languages that's one of the bits right like they, they're the only ones who are able uh to learn languages so i don't have the time now i'm too busy and we help them to master the language to feel fluent in it mm-hmm. And uh, to use it for their professional purposes, for family, you know, if maybe mm-hmm. they have members of their family who are native speakers of Spanish, or maybe just because they want to move there or they want to travel, backpacking, you know, so many different reasons. So, yeah, we work with adults teaching them Spanish, like helping them to reach that level of fluency, despite mm-hmm. of not having like all the time in the world. So we, right. we help them to make it more efficient for them. Okay. Okay. So you talked a little, well, you didn't talk about it. I, I think I said it, the, the impact of language on mental health and self-improvement. So how have you seen language learning impact the mental health of any of your students? Have you seen any, anything like that? Well, um, the the impact sometimes is very difficult to measure in that aspect, you know, like in yeah. mental health. But something that I've noticed that happens a lot is that I have students who say, well, you know, learning Spanish is sort of my me moment, <laughs> first of all. First yeah. of all, you know, like I have kids or maybe I'm taking care of everyone because of the healthcare industry. And this is my moment to uh, be able to learn something for myself, make something mm-hmm. for myself. So that's that's great. I think it's important for you maybe to make um, these new disciplines, your new hobbies, or you know, just take it as part of the things that you want to use for your personal growth. Mm-hmm. So that's that's part of it, and also because in the process you have to go through some stages of uh, dealing with your ego dealing with your fear of you know making mistakes and maybe sound silly at first or well you know or or people asking about your accent you know that stuff that always happens and I, i think that facing those those stages and realizing uh what is you know how you improve through it or you go through them yeah yeah it it makes a it makes a uh you know like an improvement that could reflect in other aspects of your life as well you're mm-hmm. less scared of learning something new you don't feel the same way about making mistakes because you know that that's just part of learning it's and part, part of, of the it. process yeah exactly so mm-hmm. that's that's something i could mention that uh, joy that sometimes my students manifest when they say okay. well I was able to help someone it wasn't clear you know like I wasn't using the most beautiful perfect Spanish yeah. but I was able to help and that person was clearly uh, grateful because of being able to communicate in their uh, mother tongue uh, mm-hmm. and you know talk about this 
personal thing, something that was related to the profession, but it was a personal thing for the client. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, so so that sort of, that type of gratification, I mean, I think is priceless and it's beautiful to be able to connect uh, with I, people so different uh, to you. <laughs> I 100% agree. And I was that person who benefited from someone who was able to speak English to me, who was Spanish speaking, right? And what's funny, and I like to tell the story, is I was in Puerto Rico. <laughs> and I, I, I parked in this parking lot that you have to get a ticket, right, to get in. And then you put the ticket in the, the machine to get out. It's normal, right? The problem is I lost a ticket. And everyone <laughs> was Spanish speaking. So I'm I'm trying to like, hey, how do I... And, and I asked this, this this older man and I was like, hey, I'm trying to, and he just stopped and he walked away. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, what the hell was that, right? And so he came back with this young guy and the young guy was like, how can I help you? And I was like, oh, here we go. So I, I told him what happened. He was able to get me another ticket and then I was able to get out. But the thing was, when he talked to me, after he helped me out, he he apologized to your point. He apologized about his, um, what he would call broken English. And uh -huh. I said, why are you apologizing to me? I don't speak any Spanish. You know what I mean? But you were able to communicate with me, help me out with my problem and, and get me straight. So the point of, you know, he was able to come out and he was able to put himself in a position to make mistakes in the conversation. But ultimately, he did what, what I needed him to do. He did what he sought out to do was communicate. Um, so hopefully what I communicated back to him will encourage him. And it was years ago, so I'm sure it did encourage him to continue on his path. He wanted to go in the military. Um, so oh. that's what the U.S. military. So that's why he was practicing English. Right. So hopefully that encounter encouraged him to continue with his learning efforts and ultimately get into the military. Angela, I want you to tell me some common myths about language learning that you frequently encounter. So give me some myths about it because I can say I cannot learn a language. I've tried to learn Spanish. I learned a little bit of German, so I got you on that one and when I was in high school. I did take uh -huh. two years of German. I took one year of Latin when I was in middle school. Right. After that, <laughs> I know, after that it's over with, right? So now I'm trying and I wish I could be born again. <laughs> to your to your yeah. point, so I You'll can feel learn that. Spanish. <laughs> But anyway, okay. go ahead. Give me some, some myths. Well, we have been touching one already, <laughs> and you know where I'm going. Uh -huh. uh, yes, this idea that uh, maybe you are um, too old. That's that's one of them. I'm too old for any, learning a language. Mm -hmm. and I think we I have, am. Well, we have this idea, and <laughs> uh, that the only ones who are capable of uh, uh, acquiring a language uh, our kids, right? There are, of course, some back, uh, like science there, like science backing up that idea because our brain is developing in a certain uh, way and is like more plastic and is easier mm -hmm. to, um, to you know, collect information or memorize it uh, mm -hmm. when we're younger. However, it doesn't mean, and there are people who have been able to master probably 20 languages after their 20s, 25 years old, you know, so there is not really a, a limit. Um, ideally, ideally, you will have the opportunity to be exposed to a second language when you are a child, but it doesn't mean that that's it and it's done if you mm -hmm. haven't done it yet. So, yeah, that is one of them. Uh, one of the reasons why kids learn languages uh, fastly or anything really is because they don't have to deal with that fear of making mistakes. I, I don't know if you have kids. I, I don't, but I've been surrounded by them. Yeah. And if you, if you tell them something like, um, yeah, this is not how we say it, or why don't you try this or try, they don't uh, stop speaking English to you, right? <laughs> oh my right, God. right. My English is broken. <laughs> I'm so sorry, right? Because right. those, those are self imposed things that we have as adults. Uh, maybe yeah. someone said that you have to be perfect, that you have to do it right. And also we compare both things like i'm so fluent in my mother tongue right i'm mm -hmm. so good at spanish i'm so good so when i have to try um uh, to speak another language that is not mm, uh, the one i feel fluent i feel stupid with it so that means mm. that it's like a 
comparison, an unfair comparison between those two languages. So then we start feeling like we're not uh, even close, you know, yeah. to, to, to master it. But it's just because, of course, the, the amount of time that you have been exposed to your mother tongue and the time that you have been right. exposed to the new one that you are learning, mm -hmm. they, they don't have a comparison. And for example, when you were saying about this learning German, probably the, the difference between the two languages, being exposed to English and being exposed to German was huge, right? <laughs> Just yeah, yeah, like yeah. Maybe some hours per day you were listening to some things in German and that was it uh, in comparison to English that you're consuming TV, your family, mm -hmm. everyone is speaking to you in the language. So, yeah, that's that's one of them. Just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Another one is thinking that people have a talent for languages. <laughs> so that's that's I find it sad for the person who is learning the language or the, the mm -hmm. person who receives that compliment because <laughs> it's, it's kind of not recognizing the work that yeah. is behind. Right, right, right. right. So it's like, ah, well, it's so nice. I've been talking to people here and, and you know, in pubs and things like that, and I speak in English with them. And mm -hmm. they say, oh, well, that's great. Some people have this talent for languages. <laughs> I'm so bad at it. Uh, yeah. I tried school. We learn French here in this country. They take a lot of French at school. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, you, you just be, some people just do it, you know. <laughs> I'm that person that's saying all that stuff. <laughs> and then you think that I wish that happened magically, you know. I wish that yeah. was a talent, but it was a lot of time, a lot mm -hmm. of effort, a lot of exposure to what I say to feel, uh, you know, silly, to feel odd, mm -hmm. um, and and a lot of uh, you know, um, try trial and error. <laughs> yeah. So, so trial just and just trying to summarize that as as a talent this is kind of unfair because it's it's, it's just a lot of work. What is behind? I would say. Okay. So, yeah, that's maybe some simplify simplification of it. Um, so yeah, we have those two. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think about another one. Well, let me let me give you this. I'm just gonna put the, I'm gonna put it everything on the table right now. Okay. Can anyone learn a new language at any stage of their life? And if so, what are those key factors? Ooh. You kind of named a little bit just <laughs> before, right? It's hard work. It's putting yourself in those, you know, in those situations, right? It's being uneasy. But but yes, so first answer yes and or no. And if so, what are the key factors for me, most importantly, to learn this new language at this stage in my life? Well, you you say <laughs> you say that <laughs> at, at your at the stage of your life, uh, uh -huh, my uh -huh. oldest student is from Australia and he's seventy four years old. So I feel young, don't worry, because there is so much <laughs> things to learn <laughs> and so, so many things yet to do to do in your life. So yes, the answer is yes. Everyone could just and it's going to sound. Uh, simplistic, but this is a lot about your mindset, you know, thinking mm -hmm, that it's possible. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, but, but yeah, thinking that it's possible and putting the, the work on it, right? If you, yeah. if you think, well, I won't be able to do it, it's too difficult. The results are already there, right? You already have your answers. It's not going to happen. But, but if you think you can do it, there is a way to do it. Uh, yeah. Your memory, like in terms of science, your brain is going to deteriorate naturally mm -hmm. so the older you are the more difficult it's going to be for you to retain information and there is an important factor of language learning that is about collecting and retaining information so that part is going to maybe take longer mm -hmm. the older you are mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you couldn't uh, reach a level of you know functional conversation Mm -hmm. uh it's, it's, it's just a probably it's going to take a bit longer than yeah. other other people um so yes it's, it's mainly about mm -hmm. uh your motivation of course because mm -hmm. one thing mm -hmm. is uh well you say it would be nice to learn the language and then feeling like you could actually feel that your life is going to improve because of that uh, skill that you have acquired so people who have a clear idea about why they want to learn uh, to learn the language 
uh, four, I would uh-huh. say that they, they reach that that point easier. So, um, purpose. That's that's yeah, exactly your purpose. Uh, knowing that there's of course a memory factor there, but it's not really like going to take you away from the dream. <laughs> you Got still it. can do it. And, uh, well, I'm talking about Spanish because, of course, it's the language that mm-hmm. I'm always teaching. But uh, there is, a, as well, um, a level of difficulty. Depending on the language that you want to learn, uh, it is going to be more or less difficult, depending on how far away we are from mm-hmm. that language. So I would say that Spanish is, people don't believe it, but we're quite close to English. We have some roots in yeah. common. Latin, yeah. <laughs> you would mention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have some <laughs> things in common, thanks to history. That's mm-hmm. going to take less time than maybe mastering Mandarin or Japanese, right? Because mm. different alphabet, completely different world, like the, yeah. the languages developed uh, <laughs> very like independently. So we mm-hmm. have no things in common. Most of them That's are true. not. So, of course, I would say, yeah, everyone can master a language, but you have to put all those factors. Which language is the one that you're talking about? Mm-hmm. And um, the time that you are ready to to put into it. Mm-hmm. And, of course, your age. But it doesn't mean that it's impossible. It's just that it's going to take longer. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and having clarity about what you want. If, um, if you're planning to use... Uh, the language for holidays as well. You could imagine that you're going to get to a fluent conversation mm-hmm. faster because it's a simple environment. And probably if you want to use uh, the language for your profession and you need to learn the jargon and all of it in, in that new language, yeah. naturally it's going to take you longer. But if you have that clarity that that's exactly what you want to do with mm-hmm. it, well, it is it's just like all those factors are really like making the equation mindset motivation and purpose i'll tell you what so one a little bit of my motivation is i am living in southern california so there are a lot of spanish speaking uh people and i believe that it would help me in in business right mm-hmm. so um just just in the general terms um just having that second language would open up other opportunities right in business in southern california two you mentioned vacay so i went to i went to cabo and thankfully so much of the world is you know interested in i guess it's more of a financial reason why but they're interested in learning english right so Uh they can you know get vacationers or tourist money right i get it right because i went there and (laughs) I was, I was supposed to go. It's a long story. Bottom line is the things that we were planning on doing, we weren't able to do. And we had to adjust our plans a little bit. And mm-hmm. going to another country and you don't speak the language and trying to adjust plans, right, is is a challenge. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but we, we found someone who spoke English and we were able to, you know, take care of that. So um, motivation, mindset, mindset. So this is just me running down what I need to do. I really need to focus in because when I go into it, I'm like, yes, I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to do it this time. And, and, and I don't follow through. I may the first couple of weeks or the first couple of vocabulary words or the genders and, you know, all of these different things. And I'm talking about Spanish specifically right now. Um, I feel really confident, but then soon as it gets to a little bit of a challenge, I'm like, "Ah, I got something else I can focus on right now. So I need to have that, that strong mindset. I need the motivation of what it is I can do after, right? Uh, that I can do with this new language, this new skill that I've learned in my, this part of my life. And then also have a purpose. So thank you. Those are three. I'm just, I'm, you know how you got to say it out loud in order to manifest it, right? So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you're giving me some stuff. All right. Yeah. And to point out that the, 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 the gaps that you have to fill. So in that case, what you say about the motivation, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy because I sometimes have this first lesson with some, some uh, students when they want to, to get a uh, sport for our uh, students. And when I ask about the motivation from that first lesson, I sort of know if they're going to succeed or not. Mm. Because, yeah, when it's like, well, you know, trying to learn a new language, because why not? Because, and I just yeah. think, oh, unfortunately, I mean, I, I wish... I wish it was different, but I've been proving this point many times yeah. when when you're just like, ah, let's see how it goes. Yeah. The first moment that you encounter an obstacle, uh, like the 
gender things and all of what you're mentioning is like, oh, mm. because again, your ego is going to take you away from the fear of, yep. of failure. Yep. So, so yeah, if your motivation is not that strong, um, it is going to be a bit more complicated. So people who, for example, they have family members who speak Spanish, for example, they, you know, their spouse or their in-laws or, you know, they, they're Spanish speakers. Mm -hmm. They tend to, they tend to succeed because they have that emotional connection, you know, mm -hmm. like I want to be able to connect with their traditions or be able to, you know, don't feel awkward after the dinner. <laughs> we yeah. talking and it's just like a, uh, just watching what's going on or, or those things or in their profession when they're able to help and when they feel that they're able to uh, you know do what they know how to do but also mm -hmm. for yeah. Yeah. expanding it that that's a great motivation for for achieving uh, bilingualism or you know to, to feel fluent in another language okay okay <laughs> all right so now we're going to shift just a little bit now we're going to talk about you you ready? <laughs> Let's, go. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> hey, so this is hindsight, right? So I like to go back a little bit, look at some choices that you've made in your life and your career and how it impacted your journey, uh, you know, today, right? So can you share like a significant choice that you made in your career or your personal life? Yeah, I thought both two and they're like chronologically organized. So I'm going to mention them both. Uh, the very first one was I was feeling sort of lost about what I was going to do. I mean, mm -hmm. being in the university, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure enough how I was going to uh, use it. <laughs> but I was learning there how, how to really make a career about it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because I studied uh, literature. So it was about poetry, novels, uh, theater, you know, very mm -hmm. abstract beautiful yeah. i was in love with the topic i was living you know in the clouds literally like just about all these abstract things philosophy mm -hmm. but i wasn't sure about how <laughs> that could mm -hmm. become something tangible that i could be using every day right. and i received this uh invitation for being um for volunteering uh, as a spanish teacher in in jamaica right mm. it was just mm -hmm. part of the university connections the deal was amazing and is in the morning i was taking english lessons mm -hmm. so and midday you have your lunch and then in the afternoon i had to give spanish lessons so it was just this type of um uh, interchange of languages okay. and i thought well i know let's try it i want to learn to speak english you know i want to improve my language uh skills right so i went there and for me that was the moment that everything made sense and mm. i fell in love with the idea you know when mm -hmm. i said i always wanted to be a teacher but i didn't know exactly how um you know what to teach yeah. and and the uh, the interest that i could find in the caribbean uh mm -hmm. in the in the anglo caribbean about spanish and being able to connect with the other islands with spanish speaking ones you know mm. being surrounded by latin america and feeling that maybe this mm. language barrier was there was very strange because we have lots of things in common so many things in common our food our carnivals our be views of life and and it was a shame that maybe they felt that the only countries they could communicate with were the english speaking ones and they wanted to you know <laughs> make that bridge yeah. less longer and yeah so, so i thought it's amazing how languages could really make a change in that aspect like i i you know i romanticize this a bit but but i really <laughs> i still do it and it's like well it's very nice being able to 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 help people to create these connections to build those bridges between cultures so mm -hmm. so yeah that, that definitely made sense for me and made me took that path in my life so so that definitely was one of those pivotal changes so you said you 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 took english lessons were you english speaking at the time and you just improved on it or were, were you um, where, were, where were you at in your studies of english well 
I I took some some English lessons in the university as well. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just basic things, so I was able to understand basic conversations. But mm-hmm. but yeah, but it was of course a challenge. I wasn't feeling confident, you know, talking about yeah. my life or my problems. So that was something interesting. When you have to go to a bank in Jamaica and solve problems, <laughs> the like I, I understand the parking lot thing because I understand how it feels like oh oh oh. What do I do? <laughs> exactly. And people look at me like they are busy, so they don't want to be interrupted. And now yeah. someone who doesn't speak their language is the one who's going to interrupt them. Ex- exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. that, was, that was fun. But but yeah, I, I, I really uh, improved my language, uh, my English uh, skills a lot. During the, during the I, t- I, t- I tell you what, I'll give you a little bit more about that story. I was probably the lowest ranking person because I was in the army at the time when we were in Puerto Rico uh-huh. uh, on a mission. And I was the lowest ranking person. And I had a uh, sergeant. Well, I had a, a senior enlisted person and I had a, a, a senior officer with me. Right. What are both senior to me, <laughs> but the, the mental, you know, like, Oh my God, I've really messed up, you know, in, in just being in that state of, Oh my God, I messed up. And then to meet this young man, who made everything better, right? Yes. So easily. Like, it was just an amazing feeling. So um, so it could have been a, a really crazy story. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't. And, and, and that one, you would think, would have been the motivating factor for me, the motivation or the purpose or the mindset to really get in there and try to learn this new language, right? Because of the feeling that I felt. Just communicating with this guy, he had the opportunity to do it. He could have said, no, I'm too, I'm too afraid, you know, to practice in, in, in real time. My ego is telling me to, Hey, let me save you right now from yourself. Let's go over here and do some other stuff in Spanish. Right. So he, he put himself out there and, and it made me feel good. And to your point, it seems like you like that as well. You like to help people to learn these other language, not necessarily to help them get out of a locked parking lot, but you, but you like to help them Maybe. learn the language. Maybe, right? You never <laughs> know when these skills are going to help you. You never know. So re- reflecting on your journey, um, what were some of the challenges that you faced once you made the decision that, hey, this is what I want to do? What kind of challenges did you face? Well, that you, uh, well, that I wasn't, initially I thought that I wasn't initially, uh, uh, in the place for using my my skills or what I wanted to do, right? Because mm-hmm, of course, mm-hmm. being in Jamaica, that was great. That was awesome, and I made the uh, lots of friends and created that solid idea about this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, of course, the volunteership uh, ended, and I came back to Bogota, right? And I thought. Okay, so who am I going to teach Spanish to here? Yeah. Everyone speaks it, right? Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not useful anymore. I'm not interested anymore. I'm already okay. speaking the language that everyone knows. Um, so, so for me, it was just understanding that if I wanted to um, be able to help people learning uh, to learn Spanish, in my case, of course, I needed to move priorly, uh to mm-hmm. live abroad to Mm -hmm. you know take decisions about what i'm going to do like it's fine to leave my family to leave my friends everything Mm -hmm. uh in order to to be in a place where i could actually help someone uh so yeah that was a process i wouldn't say that that's a decision that i took right away Uh, and um and i started of course uh studying more about it so i started my linguistics and all of it and Mm -hmm. i realized that there were many uh tourists traveling to colombia wanting to learn spanish so yeah i could well, still help not, not colombia but yes go ahead <laughs> i'm Sorry? that tourist i said i'm that tourist just not exactly. colombia but i'm that tourist go ahead. Well, and they were they were uh, attending to schools language schools mm-hmm. especially for being able to communicate in spanish so i thought well wow, that's great yeah so not 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 only for the tourist uh guides or things like that but i uh, um, you know actively wanting to take the the lessons so Mm -hmm. so yeah that was that was my process of understanding more and more how okay i could use the language i could Mm -hmm. use the the you know my my discipline and which options i had for taking this decision of well i'm going to stay here or 
I'm going to move abroad and maybe help uh, more people easier <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. you know, there's people coming to my country in comparison to being there and helping more. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's something that of course took a lot of time. I would say that it wasn't a easy decision or something that you just like, decided to, to move abroad. <laughs> it's not an easy thing, but, but yeah, that, that was that moment. That was a difficult moment. How challenging was that for you? Once you once you made that decision, okay, I'm going to move abroad. Like you, I mean, that's there's a lot to think about to just go to another country. But was your was your where where was your were you did you? <laughs> I got a lot of questions. Did you already meet your your husband at this uh, point? No, no. Uh, okay, okay. So I I started making my mind around the idea of probably moving abroad mm -hmm. um but but i kept of course uh being being in the country and, and helping through these touristic uh aspects i applied for scholarships that was <laughs> my way of starting looking for for possibilities to to live yeah. abroad uh yeah. just again doing the same type of interchange exchange of languages and, and stuff like that uh and it solidified when I met my husband. So definitely that was like my moment to say, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is he coming to live here in Colombia? That, that was something I was wondering and he was happy to do it. But, yeah, yeah. but then I thought maybe <laughs> this is exactly what life is showing me. Like this is my moment to, right, to expose right. myself to living abroad for, you know, uh, seriously and, and, you know, being able to, to, uh, make my life somewhere else but i already had like for some some years uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the idea of doing it so it was just like organizing everything doing my master's degree everything just thinking about how am i going to apply all of this when i leave the country so yeah big question mm -hmm. how has your career evolved since making that pivotal that one pivotal decision that i'm gonna have to go abroad to now uh I cannot <laughs> tell you how much you grow <laughs> yeah. when yeah. you live abroad. So even even being with a partner in my case, that was like something I, I'm not going to uh, take for granted. There was a lot of help to be able to have someone who could translate uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. more, more uh, not the language itself, but, you know, like day to day stuff, right? Like, yeah, yeah. How, how to make a how to get your driving license <laughs> things like that right and right for, for someone who is from the country it's very obvious right oh yeah i just have to do this just send this letter here and don't mm. forget to do this and that but when you're not from the country that's oh. chinese as we say I, that's definitely very difficult to get right, so right. so yeah of course i i received that help and i'm not going to deny that mm -hmm. but the feeling that you have to create a life and mm. fill it with meaning in another place when you don't have your friends yeah. right? because friends is something that yeah it's like a nice uh, and easy exit from reality sometimes it's, uh, i have this like support psych circle uh, mm -hmm. and your family as well being away from them and as a latin american for us family is like very important yeah uh, ha not having that uh, really makes you question who you are, like exactly what makes mm. you you, and yeah. how you are going to to feel with meaning your new uh, cycle, the new cycle of your life. So, so it is it's unquantifiable, really, uh -huh. how much I've I've changed or how much I've learned during this process. I've been living here for three, four years or something like that. Okay. So well, it's not like a lot, but definitely, is <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a it's been a process. So yeah. That's so, growing. so looking back, what would you have done, if anything, differently? I I don't know. I don't I don't I don't regret things. There was a little moment in my life where I could have decided <clears throat> to keep working with um I was coordinating English teachers living in Colombia teaching English, mm. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So something like the volunteership, but the other way around. So there were people okay. from Australia, from the USA, from Canada, from the UK, uh, coming to my country and mm -hmm. teaching English and learning Spanish, the opposite. And I had the opportunity to keep going through that path, but 
but I still in my heart I knew that mm -hmm. I wasn't being there teaching right it was just right. like being on top of it and saying like this is fine this is wrong and and I decided to make that change and help the tourists who were coming to to Colombia um, even if it was like less salary you know like it, it's not the most logical decision okay. money wise and my family were you know they were saying like well, what do you think <laughs> why are you doing that but but yeah so so definitely that was that was a, a decision that i had to do and uh, i just said that maybe that's that was a moment that i could yeah. have regretted something but okay. but i still don't so yeah like, of, that was part, a moment yeah part of your journey to exactly. get you where you are now absolutely okay it's you know i hear a lot of people matter of fact everybody who i ask a question like that i always say they, they don't have any regrets why do you think that is why don't you have any regrets and i'm gonna see what you say yeah. i've never asked anybody this question just, so why, no matter why, what you say why people <laughs> why <laughs> no pressure it's yeah. fine okay good yeah, I think, well, now that you say the word regret, of course I have regrets in my life, mm -hmm. maybe about mm -hmm. things that I should have done differently, ways to express ideas that maybe weren't the mm -hmm. most uh, uh, agreeable and, you know, nice. Those type of things I regret, but in terms of my path, yeah, I I don't because I'm fully aware, I mean, I... I do a lot of journaling and I understand a lot where everything develops and kind of obsessed with that. Yeah. I know that there are some things in my life now that couldn't have happened if I didn't uh, make some decisions. So, so it's like, would you, you know, would you change this for that? Like this thing for that thing? And I would say definitely no. I, mm -hmm, I wouldn't change mm -hmm. this. So what I have now is the result of all those decisions. So regretting one of them would just break the path, right? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what, I regret not learning Spanish as a baby. No, I'm just playing. Blame <laughs> <laughs> your parents. What? <laughs> what happened to you? You should have thought. I yeah. know, I know. Hey, so I, I asked you a few questions, all right? Um, is there anything that you'd like to to uh, talk about, or any question you'd like to, any subject that I haven't brought up that you'd like to talk about? Uh, well, I think I think we have touched many many topics. I mean, that they're around um, oh, what my life is uh, about <laughs> now and what we do. Yeah. So, so what I would like to do is just to extend this invitation to have a look at what we do. How, mm -hmm. how we work with uh, professionals. So again, now, if you have feel yourself identify with all these myths, like, ah, yeah, I remember <laughs> saying <laughs> to people that maybe I wasn't born for languages or that I was too old or that I don't have the talent, you know, mm -hmm. because that's another thing. Schools, schools teach, uh, gave you a wrong idea about learning. And mm. you think that maybe because you didn't do good at uh, school with languages you know in that group of 30 40 people i don't know how many people are used to be in your classroom but probably 30 mm -hmm. people right yeah about <laughs> exactly in those big classrooms uh because you didn't learn the language properly uh you just can't do it anymore mm -hmm. and the truth is that when you work uh privately as we do or very small groups as we do our groups are not bigger than 10 people i say mm -hmm. eight but sometimes we have extended it to 10 uh we have the time to uh look at everyone's learning styles and motivations again i insist a lot on that mm -hmm. and and that's what makes a difference so also think that maybe you can learn a language because of that experience at school uh mm -hmm. it's unfair it's unfair with you you know it's unfair with with your your path so you are not the same person <laughs> Back, that you were back then and also uh the approach could be different and you could yeah. you could you could do it so so well uh, keeping in mind all of that i i invite you all to have a look at the at the website choose to see if that's uh in your heart that you feel that ah yes i've been wanting to do this for a long time and i haven't 
uh, taking that first step. Uh, there is so many ways there on that website to take your first step. We we have also, you can check it, we have a little magazine that we send uh, to people's houses so they can play with some of our games and strategies like printed of course it's not the same experience as having the the live session but it's right. definitely a way to to see oh okay so uh-huh i can start grabbing some some spanish from here and feeling more confident so yeah okay so what's the, what's the website and how can the listeners or the viewers right how can they get in uh learn a little bit more about you and maybe reach out for some more information well you can find uh our uh, social media we're on instagram and facebook as fluency lab mm -hmm. or if you want to go directly to the to the website it's fluencylab.co like c-o without the m fluencylab.co uh if you want to check the magazine is the same but slash magazine <laughs> so you can just <laughs> get it there and yeah or, or also connect with me on linkedin in angela blanco that's that's how we are angela blanco spanish i think that's the one that i have as a domain thing <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> sounds good. I tell you what, the 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 website I did check out fluencylab dot com, and I did the um the um learning assessment thing, and there are some interesting questions because then I was like, how do I learn? Do I learn with pictures or do I learn with reading books? Uh -huh. And I had to really sit and think about you know how I learn. So I put the best answers that I could in there, and uh, competitive you know competitive rates in there. So I really appreciate that. And this may be my motivation. So I'm putting it out there in the universe, right? I do like your site. Very interactive, uh, very easy to navigate. So great product. Um, but that's just mine. So you go out there and you check it out for yourselves. And that's fluencylab.co. All right. And thank you, Angela, for sharing your insights and experience with us today. Uh, your passion for language learning and its broader impacts on our lives is truly inspiring. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on this journey. We hope Angela's insights have sparked your interest in learning a new language. It has for me and understanding its profound benefits. And don't forget to check out Angela's work at Fluency Lab to start or continue your language learning adventure. Until next time, keep exploring the power of your choices. Take care. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. To make sure that you don't miss a single episode, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe? And also, I have a quick survey. It'll take you one to three minutes just so I can get a better understanding on how to get the best content to you. So here that is as well. Until next time, once again, thank you.